to the Portal Podcast with Bob Colbert. I'm your host, Bob Colbert. Uh, today, we're going to do the Temple of Antoninus and Faustina. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get to the video. The Temple of Antoninus and Faustina is an ancient Roman temple in Rome, adapted as a Roman Catholic church, namely the Chiesa di San Lorenzo in Miranda, or simply, San Lorenzo in Miranda. The temple was begun in 141 AD by the Emperor Antoninus Pius and was initially dedicated to his deceased and deified wife, Faustina the Elder. When Antoninus Pius was deified after his death in 161 AD, the temple was rededicated jointly to Antoninus and Faustina at the instigation of his successor, Marcus Aurelius. The building stands on a high platform of large perpino blocks. The later of two dedicatory inscriptions says, Divo Antonino e Diva Faustina ex SC, meaning, to the divine Antoninus and to the divine Faustina. By the All righty. <clears throat> As you can tell, I'm wearing a festive hat. It is getting close to Christmas. Uh, this will be the last portal podcast for the year 2023, as the staff here at Expiration TV is fastly, we're losing folks to travel and being with family and things like that. So it, it that's the way it goes. So, uh, I hope you have a great Christmas and New Year. We'll pick it up in the new year uh, with the Portal Podcast number 10. All righty, so let's go ahead and uh, do a little reading as as we usually do. So the Temple of Antoninus uh, and Faustina is an ancient Roman temple in Rome. It was later converted into a Roman Catholic church, the Chies de San Lorenzo in Miranda, or simply San Lorenzo in Miranda. It's located in the Roman Forum on the Via, literally on the Via Sacra Road, opposite the Regia. The temple was constructed by Emperor Antoninus Pius, beginning in 141 A.D. 
It was initially dedicated to his deceased and deified wife, Faustina the Elder. Because of this, Faustina was the first Roman empress with a permanent presence in the Roman Forum. When Antoninus Pius was deified after his death in 161 AD, that was 20 years later, the temple was rededicated to both Antoninus and Faustina by his successor, Marcus Aurelius. The building stands on a high platform of large gray pepperino temple blocks. The latter of the two deprecatory inscriptions say Diva Antoninia and Divia Astinia SC, which means for Divine Antoninus and for the Divine Faustina by decree of the Senate. The eight monolithic Corinthian columns of its primaeus are 17 meters or 56 feet in height, <clears throat> featuring uh, the rich uh, base reliefs of the frieze under the cornice up there at the top, featuring griffins and acanthus scrolls and candelabra were candelabra. Sorry, <laughs> were often copied from the 16th century through the 19th century. Based on the pneumatic evidence, the temple was originally fenced off from the Via Sacra, and a large seated statue of Faustina would have been seen been inside of the cella. Fragments of this statue and one of Antonius P.S. Pius, which was added later, was discovered in front of the temple. Now, the church, which it was revamped into the Roman Catholic Church, the temple was converted into a Roman Catholic Church, the Chies di San Lorenzo in Veranda, perhaps as early as the 7th century, but it's only attested from the 11th century work by Mirabilia Urbis Romae. Miranda may derive the name of a benefactress. At that time, it was thought that was the location of sentencing of St. Lawrence, deacon and martyr to death by the prefect of Rome, hence its dedication. The Christianization accounts for the survival of the cella and the portico of the temple through the centuries, though it did not preserve the edifice from all of the damage. Originally, the podium was faced with white marble slabs with matching marble moldings at the top and bottom. Most of the marble facing was scavenged, except for the molding. The deep grooves in the temple's columns are supposed to date to the medieval attempt to dismantle the pillared portico either for spolio or destroy the pagan temple. The grooves also may have been used to attach a makeshift roof over the portico. Also, in the Middle Ages, a staircase was built on the side facing the forum, but it's now impossible to enter that side because there is a gap of 6 meters, 20 feet, between the foot of the steps and the bronze door. Before archaeological excavations, the ground level was at this door level. Excavations in front of the temple were undertaken in, in the year 1546 AD, again in 1810, and in intervals from 1876 onward. In the year 1429, Pope Martin V gave the church to the Collegio Delli of Spelicia, or Guild of Apothecaries, at the time, officially dominated the Universitas of Aroma, Torium. The college still uses its adjoining guild hall, which contains a small museum that holds a receipt for medicine that Raphael had signed. Side chapels were erected after this date. The church lacks the usual Eastern apse. One was never added so as to retain the temple's structural integrity. 
in the year 1536, the church was partially demolished and the sides chapels removed in order to restore the ancient Rome temple for the visit of Rome to Rome of Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. The t church now constrained within the cellar of the temple was remodeled in 1602 by Orazio Torriani, creating a single nave and three new side chapels. So the main altar has a uh, Rodrigo's canvas by Petro de Cornetana of the martyrdom of St. Lawrence in 1646, while the first chapel on the left hosts the Madonna and Child with Saints, 1626, by Damascina. All right, that's enough reading. <laughs> All right, so let me take this off. I'm going to bring up the Sketchfab model. Let me minimize this. All right, let me bring the sketch file model up. Yeah, there we go. Let me turn this. There we go. So this was the sketch file model that we had shown in the early podcast. So I can orient, uh, what we're looking at is number seven. That's the Antonius in Faustina Temple right there, number seven. So to orient you a little bit how this is, uh, this is a 3D sketch map, fab model. So there is the Colosseum right there. And so you can just tell it's a little short walk over <laughs> wrong way. <laughs> to right there. So let me zoom in. So this is what the church, now remember this is a low fab polygon, polygon fab model, a 3D model. So yeah, so it kind of looks like it's like melted wax. <laughs> Let me zoom in. Yeah, there we go. All right. So again, this is like a low fab polygon 3D model. Uh, so I mean, it kind of looks like melted wax. It's obviously not that like that. So, but that's kind of what it looks like in today's. Uh, yeah, in the Roman form, and I'll just kind of scroll around a little bit. This was the Vestal House of the Vestal Virgins, right there, and I believe that was the Temple of Vesta. And I think this was the Arch of Tit Titus, yeah, that we reviewed also. So yeah, so that's kind of what it looks like. We went through this. If you want to go back to the earlier uh, podcast, I forget which one it was, three, four, something, something like that. Uh, so, yeah. All right. Also, I wanted to show you. Let me turn this off. And I'll go down. The Temple of Anton. Sorry. So in the heyday of the Roman uh, Forum, this is kind of what it looked like, uh, notionally, where you have people gathered in the courtyards and things like that, had people just talking and people listening about various things, probably political stuff, war and things like that. 
So I have some additional pictures that I found. So I'll bring those up. So I kind of show you what it would also look like. Oops, I think I got to go back. Uh, let me go back to the other. Sorry. Should have been better organized here. So yeah, so these are kind of what you would have seen back in the heyday there. And you remember I was telling you it, it, it had a host, hosted a lot of people. So and it could have been market bazaars, places where you had food, things being sold. Uh, you can also uh, go there and entertainment and stuff like that, gather. You got to see people there eating at tables wrestling probably praying things like that so yeah so that's kind of what it would have looked like back in that day i also wanted to show you the from what i said last week i wanted to show you what the uh the uh house here the roman villa in ancient rome looks like so kind of it's kind of, I was trying to make it smaller there. I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> so. I guess I'll just have to rotate it around. So, yeah, so this is kind of what it looks like, the Roman Villa, in other rooms in there. This is uh, the room that you're typically familiar with, right there. See it? The library. The other was the living room. This is another room. Yeah, there's a television in every room. And then this is the side. Yeah, sort of, there's no windows. It's all outside, so. So this is kind of like a outdoor patio. And then there's the Coliseum right there. It's actually fairly, fairly big. Here's another large room for gathering for guests, friends, family. There's another view. This is the amphitheater on the other side. So I can look out and watch the plays or whatever events, the entertainment events are being uh, doing, going on.
And there's, I guess, another look on the opposite side. And one more kind of a art and a decorative. This is more like the formal living room of today. And then during, oops, I lost it. Oh, the. During the spring, uh, it's quite green out there, but I don't think you can see it. Hmm. Yeah, it's green. All this is like green grass. Interesting. All right. Let me go back to all right. <clears throat> so today uh we did a review of the temple of uh and Antonius and Faustina the Elder. So at ten o'clock Pacific Standard Time, we're gonna do our on the tabletop podcast uh hope you join us on the history of christmas and i'll be showing some pictures of our decorations and our christmas village so i hope you join us for that at 10 o'clock pacific standard time so i, I this will be a little short uh, podcast today i'm kind of short staffed <laughs> So, wherever you are, uh, I hope your family has a very safe and very thankful and uh, a, a great Christmas with family and friends. There should also uh, be a lot of good food on the table, got a lot of good festivities, and when you come back in the new year, come back refreshed and uh, hope you come back and join us on the podcast uh the portal with bob colbert so take care of my friends you have a wonderful saturday catch us at 10 o'clock on the table talk goodbye my friends merry christmas happy new year